Hi, my name's Chris Gorse. I'm here with John Sturgis. Um, um, so we've been talking in the office really about uh, this recently, this uh, Icelandic volcano um, that's erupted and some of the issues that uh, we should be considering for sustainability and the impact um, on the planet um, uh, uh, of this uh, eruption. Um, what are your thoughts on this, John? Yes, uh, Iceland is a very interesting uh, country for many, many reasons. Um, it was first colonised in about 850 to 1000 AD by the Vikings and it's been, it's been inhabited ever since. Um, what the Vikings didn't realise when they got there was that basically it wasn't as fertile a country as the ones that they'd left in Scandinavia. Because they saw a lot of trees and a lot of grass they thought it was much more lush than it in fact was uh, with the result that they cut down many of the uh, forests before they realized that these wouldn't regenerate at anything like the speed they were familiar with in, in Scandinavia. So in a sense, Iceland represents a community living on the edge of what is sustainable. Now, besides colonizing Iceland, they also colonized Greenland. And they had a colony there for 450 years. Unfortunately, that one turned out to be not sustainable because um, the medieval warm period, which lasted from about 1000 AD to 1400 AD, was the period when this uh, colony thrived. And then once the weather turned colder in 1400, um, this colony became non-viable and gradually died out. And the last members will undoubtedly have starved to death due to lack of food. Um, turning back to Iceland, um, this uh, current volcano in April 2010 has been very similar in many respects to the one that happened in the Lake Fischer in 1783. The eruption began in June and lasted until February 1784. Now at the time the population of Iceland was about 50 to 55,000 people uh, and it was sustained by agriculture and fishing and the emissions from this uh, volcano um, poisoned the land and killed many of the uh, crops and as a result uh, at least three quarters of farm animals on Iceland died mm -hmm. and as a result of the lack of uh, grain for making bread and a lack of uh, meat products to eat um, the population of Iceland declined by between 15 and 20,000 deaths being due to starvation uh, the problem got so acute that the Danish government actually considered evacuating Iceland at one point. So we can ask the question, um, are there any lessons that we can learn from it today? Well, it's, it, it's a case of a, an experiment that's all, already been done and it's written up in the history books. If you, if you examine what happened, uh, you can get quite a lot of answers to questions that people are asking. Uh, today. Now, yeah. what actually happened in Iceland was that in those seven or eight months in, in 1783-84, um, the smoke and industrial effluent from the whole of planet Earth in 2010 was dumped on Iceland in that period of eight months, 200 odd years ago. That's what happened, and with the catastrophic consequences mm -hmm. that, that we saw. Um, that's, a, that's a, a lesson that can be learned and, and so these, these communities that actually live on the edge of what is viable um, have valuable lessons to, uh, to teach us in terms of uh, future sustainability of, of the rest of the, the, the planet um, in terms of uh, effects of pollution, in terms of natural resources and so on. Uh, the, uh, the Icelanders had to grapple with a a desperately serious problem. The, the res results of the uh, volcano were also interesting. They drifted, as they've done this last week, across Scandinavia, mm -hmm. and then some of them went south over Germany, and then across France, and then they crossed the Channel, and they moved up the east coast of England. And another interesting statistic, somebody you know, aware of this uh, particular date, analyzed deaths among agricultural workers in the east of England and found that in that year, 1783-84, there was a sudden spike in deaths 
of agricultural right. workers, which is normally a very healthy outdoor occupation, and this was just down to the inhalation of these toxic mm. products and, and particulates yes. from this uh, this volcano. So again, um, there's a lot of lessons to be yeah. learned. So while we're w worried about not being able to get from our destinations around the world because of uh, air flights being cut, cut, there could be, if this continues, eruptions continue, some much more, um, yeah, uh, yeah. much greater issues to consider. Yes, yes. Uh, most people go about the, the daily lives completely unaware of where everything comes from and that includes things like food products and uh, they assume that it's they can jump on a plane and just go where they want and um, without any uh, any cost but what what this thing does is to remind us is that in fact there is a price to everything and um, we are part of a system uh, of natural forces against which we are in many cases powerless mm -hmm. Well, thanks for that, John. I'm um, sure this is something that people are going to find very interesting. Um, and we'll uh, see how things progress. Hopefully it doesn't erupt in the too near future. Um, uh, but this is another experiment that we can keep our eyes on. Yeah. Thank you.